Dr. Wood, author book, Miracles and Minutes. Uh, today I uncover, um, I don't know, one of the skills I'm perfecting is problem solving and human relations. So like I said, I got three daughters, uh, teenage years. Um, I've run, uh, do some leadership consulting and um, help out with management consulting with um, some friends and um, who run businesses and stuff like that and dealing with their people problems. See. It's hard to get your business to run if you can't get your people to work together as teams and everyone brings their typically their personal problems into work and then has a pan out throughout the day. Some people have poor relational skills and just can't get their shit together. Then they cause problems in your workplace and you got a shit show on your hands. It's not a lot of fun to come to work. So <clears throat> let's just talk about how I'll give you a scenario. Uh, I'm not going to give you exact details, but I'm going to give you a scenario. So I had a... Uh, a major problem was brought to my attention uh, about one of my daughters and um, you know it was pretty pretty significant it, it could have led into a lot of things and uh, she was embarrassed um, and she felt awkward and she felt ashamed and um, so you know it's it's using consequences appropriately and knowing when to consequence and knowing not to consequence I didn't need to consequence her here to to on a certain aspects. I don't need to Shardy feels guilty. Shardy feels ashamed and, and, and Embarrassed the last thing I need to do as the parent and especially as the man is coming and grind her nose in it Look what you did and da, 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 da. So all right, so first you're gonna create this space, okay, so you got two two people here's me and here's the like, example here's my daughter and uh, What's going and what's going on in her world? So I leave my head before I get there and think about how is she probably feeling? She's already had an interaction with her mother. Now the father's coming in. What is she already feeling? What are her emotions? And she's embarrassed. She feels ashamed um, and awkward. Okay. So I, 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 before I get there, that's what an empathy what what's going on what what could be if that happened to me and I was a girl and I was her age what could I be feeling okay so I go huh all right so then is what's needed because I'm not going to step over the problem sweep it under the rug that's bullshit I don't sweep problems under the rug because when I do that I kind of condone the behavior it's not brought up and we didn't problem solve one damn thing you know if you punch a hole in your wall and put a picture over it you don't solve anything the other thing is in studying human emotions if she holds the guilt and shame inside she can't release it she can deny it and doesn't want to talk about it putting a picture over it so not to feel this feeling it's still inside of her I don't want that inside of her because I love my daughter okay she needs to know that daddy or mommy or whoever or her father says it's okay let's just talk about this let's get it out in the open bring it to light that's how light cures shit you put the cut in the light it cures it so there's an internal hurt going on an emotional hurt get in her world first how would I feel here's what happened I don't like what happened but here's she's now made found out about what happened she's embarrassed and guilty and awkward that's how her feelings are. Now I got to create this space. I need to be, I got to create my head first. I need to be calm. Okay. Calm and relaxed. What do I need to bring to this situation? What do I need to bring into this space? Father, she's feeling these feelings. I need to be calm. I need to listen. I want to understand. Uh, I want to talk about what happened and then, and then resolve it. So I said, so-and-so, I want to talk to you about this. She goes, I don't want to talk about it. You know, trying to step over it and because she feels guilty. I said, well, let me first um, tell you I love you and I care about you a lot. I said, the purpose of this conversation is because I do love you and I want what's best for you. Um, I, I'm aware of what happened. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, talk about it that way. You already know what happened. So I'm not going to repeat the subject matter. What, what I do want to talk about is, is um, this is this is this is what happened? That's the result, and this is the behavior. Okay, this behavior caused this issue now, in possible issue in our life. What I wanted to bring, luckily, nothing bad really happened. Okay, 
God had mercy or grace or something. This could have gone really bad, possibly. Let's talk about possible consequences. The things that didn't happen, just because it didn't happen this time with this behavior, doesn't mean it might not happen another time. What are all the... Well, I'm going to talk about, like, if... What if this happened? What if, what if you know, these other people found out? What if this got spread around school? What if this got, you know, whatever? You know, you got to really... You know, I understand. I was once, you know, your age. You're impulsive. You're in the moment. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't thinking. You were in the feeling in the moment. But when you're having a feeling, you got to think before you take action. That's what I want you to consider. You didn't think before you acted. You were just feeling. See, that's how people do stupid shit. When someone pulls out a gun and shoots somebody, sometimes they just felt very angry. They didn't think. They just acted. Not a good idea. This is usually what happens. Most bad behaviors is someone just had a feeling, didn't think about consequences or results, went right from feeling right to acting. Boom. And you can't undo it. You can't undo it. You can't undo what happened. If I if I break your leg, you can't you can't unbreak it. <laughs> so I don't go and try and I'm not here to try to ameliorate the past. I'm not here to fix the past. We're going to learn from the past, but I'm not here to just like hold you in the past mistake, keep consequencing you in the mistake, keep consequencing you in the mistake, keep bringing it up and bringing it up to make you feel guilty or ashamed. It's not, that's not how you discipline. That's not how you correct. And nobody gets better from that shit. It doesn't work. A lot of people go back to prison. I'm not saying people don't need to be in prison, but shit, how many people keep going back for the same thing? Obviously, nobody freaking learned anything. We didn't get to the root causes, whether it's in prison or whether it's in relationship issues. A lot of people keep making the same mistakes called insanity. Look at it this way. What's going on in their world? Who do you need to be to make the difference in their world and have the correction occur? Had a feeling, impulsive, wasn't thinking, acted, now's the result. What usually happens is people didn't think, or their thought, what were you thinking? Maybe they have some weird beliefs. Maybe I thought no one would find out. I thought, you know, it would be no big deal. I thought this and that. Well, let's talk about how you thought. Okay? So obviously what you were thinking with this feeling didn't produce the re reality that you thought it would. Let's talk about how you thought about it. I do want to talk about the possible consequences that could have happened if you don't learn how to change your thinking and think before you act. I can't get control my feelings. Let's teach you how some deep breathing stuff. Let's teach you how to self-soothe. If you can't get control of your feelings and you don't even think and you act impulsively and just take action, this is how people can't ever fix their lives. They don't ever get in touch with what's driving the mechanism. Then when something happens, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to look. You can't make me look. I don't want to look. I don't want to talk about it. Let's just move on. Please move on. Let's move on. Please. I don't want to deal with it. Got to deal with it. If you're the father or the mother or the parent or you run the corporation, you got to deal with these issues. You don't sweep shit under the rug. That's why we're $17 trillion in debt. No one wants to face the consequences. No one wants to go through the pain of dealing with the facts. No one wants to look at what we're thinking about, whether or not it works or not. If it's not working, we're going deeper in debt. we got to do something different. I'm going to recommend a book here. Because a lot of times, what happens is, it's all ego. Marshall Goldsmith. Okay? What got you here won't get you there. So I'm going to cover Peter Sage has four um, emotional states we all go through. The victim. I can't believe you did this to me. Why are you doing this to me? What, what, look, what, look what they did to me. To me. So if you can't control your thoughts, can't control your feelings, you are a victim. So let's teach you how to get control of your thoughts and feelings. 
So what you got to give up to get out of the victim mentality to change your life is you have to give up the victim, you have to give up the stories, you have to give up the thoughts and beliefs. Then people go from, to me, the victim, they go to, buy me. They just go get done. They get done by me. I'm the man. I'm the woman. Look at me. Ain't I good? Now, some people move between that matrix of, uh, I feel like a piece of shit, pump yourself up, feel like a piece of shit, pump yourself up more, and the more you pump yourself up, the lower you feel like a piece of shit, and the more you have to pump yourself up, the more you feel like a piece of shit. It's a bad matrix to work through. <laughs> You want to get to the more mature thing is that life doesn't happen by you. You're not God incarnate. You can't stop yourself from dying. You can't fix the world. You can't save your kids or none of that shit. So life happens through you. See, when you get relaxed and you get calm, you just start to know what to do. The universe kind of speaks through you and acts through you, and you can make a difference. So what got you here uh, won't get you there. It moves away from being about me. You know, I'm not here to, to get kudos as the father. Um, and it's not about the child and making them feel good. It's about us. It's about creating that relationship and community and being a loving, supporting person for someone when a problem does happen. I don't grind their nose in it. Unless they're being egocentric, then I'm going to grind your nose in it. I'm going to grind your ego down. I'm going to break your ego if you're being truculent. Or I have to put you out. You need to go home today. You need to come back and talk to me when you get your shit together. I expect more from you. I think you're a great person, and I think you have a, great, a lot of great potential. Right now, you're being an asshole. You need to leave. That's being assertive, but also checking that ego. People get on the ego train and think they're going to try to run you over. If you don't cut it down a little bit, and at the same time, talk into their character. I expect more of you. You're a very intelligent person. You have a lot of potential. You're in here acting like a jackass. I see how good you are. You can't come in here and throw a tantrum in this office and act like a child. That's what I've had to do with a couple people that I've known. Because they were acting like a child. You're 30 something years old. You're 40 years old. You're 50 years old. Please. I expect more from you. And you should expect more from yourself. I know you can do it. You are wonderful. But right now you're needing to be an ass. And you need to go home. You think about that. That's how I consequence them. That's when you have an ego. But if someone's willing to listen and they have your love and they have your trust and you put it in there, say, look, I love you and I care about you. And that's how I start out the conversation. You have to be the person in the relationship depending upon what starts to transpire. Sometimes it's love and compassion. Sometimes it's tough love. And sometimes it's cutting someone off. And sometimes it's like, you need to step out today and come back another day and we'll try again. And if you can't get your shit together, I guess I'm going to have to write you up and you have to leave this corporation. Not because I want you to leave, because you're choosing to leave. And that's being assertive. You put the onus on them. The responsibility's on you at this point. I'm giving you a potential to get this shit worked out. Obviously, you don't want to. So, you know, it's it's... I've been in a lot of different difficult situations. You need to learn. You need a lot of tools depending upon what's present. You know, if you need a hammer, use a hammer. If you need a screwdriver, use a screwdriver. But if all you got's a hammer, not everything's a nail. Dr. Wood, have a great day. And this is how I get into a little bit about problem solving and um, human relationships, whether it's with your children or at work. Have a good one.